Coulomb's law for forces and fields is straightforward enough, but as written it only applies to point charges. Now, believe it or not, there are good reasons that we learn about how points work, and none of them involve us enjoying wasting your time with frictionless spherical chickens. One easy reason is that any real object, when viewed from far away, basically looks and acts like a point object. Oftentimes, you can take a charged body or collection of charge and approximate it as a point with some net charge. But there's something more relevant than that. To solve real problems in science and engineering, we often do some variation on the same basic thing. First, we take some realistic, complicated object and break it down into a collection of point-like bits. Then we describe what one of those tiny point-like bits does by itself. And then we add up the effect of all the little points to learn what the real system does. And we just happen to have a mathematical tool that lets us add up large collections of tiny bits. That's exactly what integration is. This approach is sometimes called finite element analysis. And is used in basically every science and engineering field. Let's say we want to find the field made by an extended body with total charge Q. Divide it into a bunch of infinitesimal point-like bits, each one of which has an amount of charge dQ. Each point-like bit makes fields according to Coulomb's law, so let's write that down. Some infinitesimal bit of the total field dE comes from each dQ. And note that every dQ might have a different R vector. Finally, to find the total field, you integrate this expression over the entire object. Sometimes that's easier said than done, so we'll work through an example in detail. Here's a charged rod of length L, sitting on the x-axis with one end at the origin. Let's suppose the rod is non-uniform, with charge density lambda equals some constant c times x squared. That means the charge gets denser as you move out along the axis. We're going to find the E-field at some point with xy coordinates a, b. First step in any problem, write the fundamental law you're going to use, in this case, Coulomb's law. We look at that and we see that most of the work is in figuring out things like the r vector and dq. Remember, the dq just represents some chunk of the extended object. On our picture, and you better have a picture, we'll mark out one arbitrary dq that lives at some distance x from the origin. The entire rod is made of many such dqs at many different x's. Now, we don't really know how to integrate this with respect to q, so we need to do a change of variables. That is, we need to re-express dq in terms of something else. The usual trick is to say that some infinitesimal chunk of linear charge dq can be written as a density times an infinitesimal chunk of length. So dq equals lambda times dl, where in this situation, dl can be dx. Integrating with respect to x is something we're pretty accustomed to, and we're given lambda, so that's handy. The other major unknown is the r vector. It has two components, which we'll indicate on our picture. Remember, the r vector points from the source dq to the observation point, the place we're finding the field. The vertical component of r points up and is the same length no matter which dq we consider. The horizontal component might point either left or right depending on where the dq is, and is of variable length. Working out the geometry, we get the r vector is a minus x i hat plus b j hat. And the magnitude of the r vector is easy enough. So we put everything together. And this is the field made by some specific object. So this is a definite integral, and we need bounds. We're integrating with respect to x, and the least x ever is is 0. The most x ever is, is L. 
This actually represents two different integrals, since we can distribute things out as follows. There's one integral for the x component of the E field, and one for the y component. And at this point, all that remains is to either grind out the integral by hand, or to shove it into something like Wolfram. The meat of the problem is in the setup, as it so often is.